That was flat out impressive. Ron Jaworski, Michael Barkan. This is Nissan in game live. Jaws to fall behind 14 0. At your own hand, really, when you fumble the ball away or throw the interception in Jalen Hurts' case, and you score 20 unanswered points and take the lead going into halftime impressions? It could have been worse after the 14 nothing lead. Yes, it could have. You know, Trevor Lawrence fumbled. just zagged on a double move. It could have been 21 uh, nothing. The Jaguars then fumbled, and the Eagles took that momentum. And they, once they, I'm, this second quarter for the Eagles this season has been just remarkable. Whatever they do at the end of the first quarter, bottle it. Whatever adjustments they make at the end of the first quarter, bottle it. Because their second quarter, all season long, they have been dominant. Yeah. Jalen Hurts, 10 of 15. He started 2 of 4 with the pick, and his, and his uh, rating was 29. Now it's up to almost 70. Uh, I know the bottom line is what happens at the end of the game, but your impressions of his play, and in particular, that first pick, it looked like, uh, maybe had he led the receiver a little bit more, it still would have been viable. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Michael. It was, it was slightly behind him. I, I, I wouldn't recommend that throw in these types of conditions. Um, I, I appreciate and respect his willingness to make a difficult throw, but the wind is hollowing. The ball is slippery. That's a tough throw to make. He gets batted up in the air, and usually bad things happen in the secondary when the ball is in the air. That was one I wish – he would not have thrown, and I'm sure when he looks at tape, he's going to say, hey, I tried to force that one in there. They were already down Avante Maddox, and then add Slay to that, Darius Slay, and Jordan Mailata on the offensive line. Um, how well can they sustain this being the case against Jacksonville second half? You know, when you lose three quality players that have really had a fantastic season so far, um, you think there would be a fallback and it wouldn't be as effective with backups in there. They've been just as effective, so you, you got to give – Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni, the, the props for developing some depth, some draft draft choices that have filled in and played well. So, you know, in the course of an NFL season, you got to have contributions from every player on that roster and then some. I mean, this first half was a perfect example. Star players getting hurt, backup players step in, and they don't miss a beat. In fact, accelerated play in the second quarter. Barrett Brooks said 200 yards for this offense, rushing the ball because of the weather. Uh, I went with 125 with Miles Sanders by his own self, and, and they are doing that. Jalen Hurts chipping in, of course, but but Sanders looks pretty good. 58 yards on 14 carries. Yeah, well, I would, you know, the beauty of it is they, 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 there are a lot of people getting involved. And, you know, we always say that this is the best offensive line in football. You can hang your hat in this offense line when you have to. When you get rain and wind and inclement weather, that's when you got to bring the running game. You know, Barrett talked about it, uh, you know, about every segment on the pregame show. This, you know, the, the, we talk about receivers knowing where they're going. That helps the offense. When offensive linemen know where they're going, what you do in the running game, it's easier to run the football. So it has played out exactly like that, you know, in the first half. Uh, 25 rushes, 112 yards. I mean, that is tremendous for just one half of football, over four yards carry and 112 yards. And as, as you just said, Sanders has – 58 yards on 14 carries. Yeah, uh, the, you're uh, gonna get right. You're gonna get it right this week. I how about the, I might. <laughs> I did. Well, I was pretty darn close. Now, come yeah, on, I pal. <laughs> I was pretty close last week, yeah. if I if I recall correctly. When, when you look at Jake Elliott, one point does not a game make nor a season make. Uh, I don't even know if you blame it on him. It, it looked like the wind took him, but that's a lot of wind to grab a football. What did you see on yeah, the failed well, extra point? Well, he, he knows the winds here. You just have to look at those flags. That part of the end zone, they were they were blowing directly left to right. They were. They're parallel to the field, so you had a strong win. He's kicked it up in this stadium. He just hit it down the middle rather than the left upright. If you hit it down the left upright, it's going to fade back down the middle. He started down the middle. It faded right outside the pipe, so you – you, know, you miss a critical extra point for those people that wager on games, you know, it's a six and a half point spread. Who does that? I don't know. I've heard rumors. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Lastly, you've played in these conditions. What, you know, tell us what it's like. I remember after the fourth and 26, that Derek Gunn and I went down on the field. We, we jokingly tried to create it. I couldn't get the ball 10 yards, let alone 26. The wind was swirling the day after that game. I'm thinking about it now on the wide shot. You don't see the raindrops. It just looks like a cloudy day. You see that close up with Hertz behind center. And I'm thinking he's blinking his eyes to keep the raindrops out. What is that like and how formidable is it to overcome that? And, and, and the rain and the wind have picked up as this game has gone on. So it makes it even more difficult. But you really need to prepare two game plans for weather like this. Coach will tell you, hey, we got this nice weather game plan if the storm clears, or we got to use this bad weather game plan if it stays. 
And then you communicate at halftime or at, at the sideline after every possession. Look at the flag. Which way is it blowing? Uh, you know, how hard is it coming down? The coach will ask it. What's the ball feel like? Is it too wet? Should we call less passing plays? Can you throw the ball deep? Is it, What way is the wind affecting your football? So you garner a lot of information during that break, during when the offense on coming off the field and the defense on the field. So it's constant updating of what's happening. But you really go into a game with two game plans. And right now, it looks like the Eagles are into their second game plan, and that one is run the football. What's the third game plan for the second half, my friend? Well, How's I think they're, 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 running, they're dominating the line of scrimmage. I mean, you, know, you look at how they're moving the football. It, it's the running game right now that it's working. So stick with the running game. Force those safeties to get involved in the running game. Force the linebackers to get involved in the running game. Now you open up the space down the field. Then the play-action game comes into play. So you can get receivers wide open so you don't have to have make those make those tough throws that Jaden will have to make. This was impressive to me, and I know with a half yet to go, there's there's still a lot oh, more there's long to way do. To go. Yeah. But but the fall behind 14 nothing to come back the way they did after turning over the ball and allowing points – that's the mark of a team that's got its its designs on something greater than just making the well, playoffs. Well, you know, the, the other silent part of this is the aggressiveness of Nick Sirianni. And that shows me his belief in this football team. You know, fourth down, quarterback sneaks, fourth down, quarterback sneaks with a, a push from Goddard. Going for, you know, in gambling in these situations, believing in his players that they can make the play. Those are the type of seeds that are being planted now that will pay dividends down the road. We were tossing it around last one. It was fourth and one. Uh, one minute, 10 seconds to go down low. I mean, they're on the doorstep, but it's still fourth and one. Do you take the points on the field goal or go for it? He went for it. Uh, frankly, I, I we're, we're doing the survey. and I'm like, hey, I take the points. You tied the game. He went for it and ends up in a touchdown. What's Coach Jaworski do? Kicking a field goal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kicking the field goal. I, I, maybe I'm a little old school in, in, in my thought process, but uh, I, I just believe in that situation, tough weather conditions, you know, let's get the lead rather than give Jacksonville some momentum if we don't get it. But Nick has such belief in his football team, and, you know, they they, they made him right. All right. We'll see what happens in the second half. Reminder, when the clock hits zero, we're there for you on NBC Sports Philadelphia for Eagles Post Game Live. Talking about 4-0. We hope. Yes.